Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers. I'm looking at a book from Informa. It's an 800 page book, it's a heavy one. It's The International Law of the Shipmaster. Here's the review on Flickr. It's a detailed review I've written with my wife. The book is written by three people John A.C. Cartner, Richard P. Fisk, and Tara L. Leiter. And you can see from the beginning of the book. Um, the international um, way in which it's done. The book is dedicated to Rear Admiral Malcolm McKinnon III, U.S. Navy retired, friend and mentor. Useful preface, then a lot of detail, some um, very important detailed contents, then information country by country, then towards the back you have some detailed principal references, and then uh, again right towards the end, a very short index, which is, again, of some use. Now, the title we've given this book is For the Global Maritime Community, an Invaluable Work of Reference. And this is what we say. For the legal practitioner, the book's a unique and invaluable um, piece of work at a time uh, that we needed, thus saving um, a good survey of the law, which you could spend a lot of time on, which affects shipmasters across a range of jurisdictions worldwide and it's all leg logically set out in one convenient volume. Not only is this a unique source of reference for lawyers and the courts as well as shipmasters themselves, the insights it provides constitute an invaluable aid to decision making for ship managers and operators, not to mention risk managers. But the book of course is aimed at a still wider readership from port authorities, consuls and coast guards to brokers, bankers and booking clerks. At last, here's a volume that offers in-depth and quite astounding insights into the person and pivotal role of the shipmaster. Responsible for his ship 24 hours a day, the shipmaster holds the responsibility for transferring its cargo across oceans. The book starts by attempting to establish a commonly recognised definition of shipmaster, described in general terms, quote, as a, a qualified seafarer in charge of a ship. In English usage, the term captain is the title which refers to most masters. More, mere definitions, however, cannot begin to describe adequately the complexities of the shipmaster's role. In the newly emerging world of global business, the modern shipmaster must uh, deal with assimilate, act upon and make judgments upon vast loads of information pertaining to commercial and maritime practices from cargo engineering and salvage to medical and employment issues as well as weather and conditions in ports. The book therefore will assist the shipmaster and those with whom he works to understand his place in, in law in whatever jurisdiction he finds himself anywhere in the world. That's why I mentioned the particular countries that are covered in, in the various parts which make up the bulk of the book. Just one look at the table of contents um, will show you the scope of the book. And part three, for example, deals with the principal domestic laws governing the shipmaster in the states of the United Nations and International Maritime Organization. These number some 300 nations at least from Afghanistan to uh, Vanuatu and Zimbabwe, all covered in the book. For example, check out one or two other things. The note on the centennial of the Titanic, which mentions that the swift reaction to the disaster of 1912 was the convention Solus, which survives as one of the pillars of the law of the shipmaster. But there's a note to uh, the editor, Solus, contrary to what the footnote says, is not listed in the table of acronyms. In addition to this and other fascinating historical insights and a survey of the international law affecting the shipmaster, the book contains the codification, nationality and taxation requirements uh, for the master in 179 jurisdictions, so it's, it's very concise. It compares the law of agency for shipmasters and crews across jurisdictions and examines the duties of shipmaster in company, encompassing liabilities and penalties in all the IMO member states. So let me just sum up by saying the book was published in September 2009. No doubt it will be updated as the years pass, but we believe it is destined to become a classic work in maritime and shipping law, and certainly one that's very modern and up-to-date. So thank you very much, Informer. Thank you. Bye-bye.